Hi, uh, we have been discussing about uh, the internet as source of information. Uh, we discussed in general about the sources that are available for different purposes uh, in common for the people and also uh, what could be the resources which are available on the internet uh, used for academic purposes. Uh, of that we discussed about uh, two resources in the previous uh, part, uh, one is on uh, open courseware and ebooks. And uh, there are many more uh, sources also which are uh, equally important, uh, which include institutional repositories, open access e-journals, electronic thesis and dissertations. So, these uh, three uh, with uh, some additional uh, sources which would be uh, very relevant and uh, useful to the academic community would be discussed in this part 2. So, let us take uh, these institution repositories uh, uh, first. So, um, when we uh, came across the open access movement and particularly the availability of open uh, source software tools uh, for library automation and uh, digitization like for example, Koha for library automation, uh, DSpace and uh, GSDL for creating digital libraries. Every institution thought of uh, having their own repository including uh, the learning, uh, teaching learning resources which can be uh, very useful to their uh, students and teachers even for outside they did not think of the outsiders first, first of all they wanted to create a repository in which they can upload all the teaching related materials at one place and also their uh, unique resources that they find in the library that can be digitized and uh, put uh, in their repository uh, for their own use. So, then uh, uh, the moment uh, uh, got momentum uh, in the society and uh, many institutions came forward to create their own repositories. So, here we have to understand what uh, an uh, IR is exactly. It is a digital archive of intellectual product created by the faculty, researcher, staff and students of an institution and accessible to end users both within and outside the institution with very few barriers to access. So, the, it is very clear that the resources which are generated by their own stakeholders have to be made accessible to everyone at any time whether within the campus or outside the campus. Uh, when it is outside the campus there will be some barriers. So, those barriers uh, also were uh, uh, eliminated uh, later, but uh, this was the purpose of creating an institutional repository. So, the repo in that uh, way uh, many repositories came into existence uh, in India. The, the prominent ones we can uh, take a few to be discussed here. Uh, the institutional repositories in India, uh, one is the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore and they used uh, the e-prints uh, that is one of the software uh, for uh, institutional repositories. The number of publications what they have uh, archived in this uh, uh, repository is uh, around uh, 25,000 and number of uh, subjects covered it is more than 100 and the submissions limited to only IAC members and uh, uh, the repository can be browsed by year, subject, author, document, type, keywords, etc. So, this is the a screenshot of that particular repository e-prints at uh, IASC uh, Bangalore. So, from here uh, the their own users can make use of all these resources within the campus without any limitations and when they go out there may be some restrictions for some uh, uh, resources like for example, thesis and dissertations if they are not able to download from outside there may be some restrictions. So, uh, limited access uh, will be given to the selected sources. Similarly, Indian Institute of Management Code, uh, they use uh, the DSpace uh, software uh, for creating their own repository they have already created and similarly there are many more uh, to name a few Indian Statistical Institute Bangalore, Indian Institute of Technology Delhi, uh, NIT Raurkela, 
uh, National Aerospace Laboratories, Bangalore. Uh, now we cannot name the institutions, uh, there are so many, almost every institution in the country has uh, started uh, creating their own repository for their own users and also they want to make it accessible to outsiders also to some extent. So, that is the move uh, where we are now and also there are some uh, uh, repositories in other countries, uh, the um, uh, prevalent ones are this Canadian Association of Research Libraries, uh, Durable Digital Depository, uh, MIT Libraries and E-Scholarship Repository uh, from California University. Uh, these are all uh, the notable uh, repositories uh, and also RDN, uh, this is again a huge uh, repository where we can get the uh, e-resources, uh, e-prints uh, UK contents from uh, 30 repositories. So, it uh, culls information from various repositories which is uh, 30 in number and also open uh, directory of uh, directory of open access resources, uh, this uh, comprises almost uh, all the sources which are available uh, in the open platform in the public domain. So, this uh, indexes all those in one at one place. So, from here also we can uh, uh, find the relevant uh, um, site where you can find uh, the information or the electronic uh, uh, resources of your choice. So, this is uh, the um, uh, screenshot of uh, open uh, DOAR, Directory of Open Access Resources. From here you can have uh, all those uh, uh, resources, whatever you need. Uh, similarly, this open access journals uh, at a global level, uh, when we talk of the journals, uh, it used to be really very expensive and even for the libraries it was difficult to afford the budget with a limited budget to subscribe to number of journals. Uh, simply for example, the CSIR journals, uh, Indian Academy of Sciences journals, this, those were all in print medium. Uh, we were not able to have access to that unless you have the subscription to it. So, because of this open access uh, movement, they also came forward to keep all their journals available and uh, many more institutions came forward to keep all their uh, publications, uh, institutional publications. Uh, publicly for public access without any fee. And uh, then uh, based on this, uh, the director of open access journals, uh, also it is uh, a huge repository with, uh, which uh, consists of uh, all the uh, open access journals that are available on the internet. So, it is, uh, it was developed and maintained by uh, Lund University Library Sweden and it uh, uh, consists of more than uh, 10,000, around 10,000 journals and uh, 5861 searchable at article level. Uh, the contributions are from 134 countries and the articles it is uh, more than uh, 17 lakhs. Uh, this is a huge repository and uh, for open access journals, it is a directory. Then uh, Textra is another uh, the kind of uh, open access journal repository. Uh, this one actually this uh, includes, this covers the subjects like engineering, mathematics and uh, computer science and JSTOR is uh, again uh, a popular one and a very uh, huge repository for that and uh, academicjournals.com uh, .org that is also very popular and uh, any journal that you uh, wish to get, you can get it from that and the Intuit subject catalog and search engines, uh, this also gives. Uh, the huge amount of information for all the subjects. Uh, coming to the uh, open access journals um, that are accessible from India, uh, the, this one uh, CSIR as I said before, uh, the NISCARE, it, they have their own repository in which as soon as the issue is published that would be made available for the public for uh, free use. So, it is available on NOPR, uh, NISCARE online uh, periodicals repository where they uh, deposit all the journals, it comes to around 12 I think. And uh, again Indian uh, National Science Academy, uh, INSA, they also have their own publications in their own website. Uh, Indian Academy of Sciences, they also have about more than 10 journals and uh, particularly the journal, uh, this journal of current science, it was extremely difficult for us to have access to that uh, unless you subscribe to it. Now it is uh, freely available and many scholars and the researchers uh, 
benefit from that uh, because of this open access movement and also because of the facility uh, provided by internet to host all those uh, resources for uh, users. And also indianjournals.com is another uh, important uh, uh, tool uh, site where we can get uh, uh, some uh, open access journals in the field of science and technology and medicine. And this uh, covers uh, to a large extent. And uh, similarly, the digital libraries, uh, people have started uh, creating their own digital libraries because every institution, academic institution, particularly colleges and universities, they have got their uh, rich resources uh, including rare books and uh, own thesis and dissertations and uh, this um, learning resources of uh, teachers in the form of lectures and tutorials and the students assignments. All those things you know are um, uh, very rich in nature and it would be useful to the uh, younger generation who are coming to the system uh, afresh. For them it will be useful and for that they everybody's uh, every institution is in the process of creating digital libraries. To name a few I have uh, simply listed uh, one is MIT Consortium for Educational Coming CEC, Digital Library of India, Director of Open Access Repositories, e Gyan Kosh, uh, Library of Congress Digital Library, National Science NSDL and NISCAR uh, NOPR, uh, NPTEL, uh, British Library, UNESCO Library, Virtual. World Digital Library and all. So, this has been listed with uh, uh, the corresponding links uh, with URL. So, when you click on uh, that URL, it uh, takes you to uh, the particular site. Similarly, for open access e-journals, the feature of this is that journals would be uh, made available on their own site. Only thing you have to uh, enter into their site and you can have access to the resources whatever is available. Uh, for uh, according to your relevance. So, this is the list of uh, e-journals, um, uh, Directory of Open Doge, uh, Free Online Chemistry Journals and many more I have clearly uh, listed. And uh, this is the, the list continues in this also. And uh, again e-books uh, we discussed in the previous part. Uh, we discussed only about a few uh, sites where you find uh, e-books. And there are many more that are available for different subjects and uh, for different purposes. So, those also have been uh, listed with uh, along with their URLs that you can make use of it. This uh, list continues. And e-reference tools, uh, many of us uh, you know uh, are not in the habit of uh, using this um, conventional dictionary because uh, we have to take that, turn the pages, uh, identify the Mm -hmm. uh, word then we have to read the meaning. So, now we, everything is available on even our mobile, mobile we can see. So, that uh, availability of these kind of e-reference tools also uh, is, has become very easy because of the advent of internet and particularly world wide web. So, the reference tools that are available uh, dictionaries like a Cambridge glossary, a scholarpedia which would be very useful to the scholars and a subject dictionary uh, in the field of science and technology and uh, newspaper uh, sites also we find. And uh, this Mendeley, this is again open source tool which is uh, used for reference management. So, most of us are not that accurate in uh, in-text citation and uh, recording reference entries. So, that uh, this Mendeley if you are able to, it is uh, absolutely free, if you download that you have to install your system and integrate with your uh, MS Word. So, then you can uh, start managing your own library uh, collecting information from various sources and uh, for within that you can organize your collections uh, by subject, by author. So, in whichever way you want you can do that and uh, just by one click you can get uh, your uh, reference list. Uh, in text citation when, wherever you need simply you have to right click and insert citation that will take. Only thing this is uh, free and you have to download and you have to learn the, the, this uh, A to Z of how to use this mentally. So, this is also another important tool for the uh, teachers, students and even researchers. And e-thesis, uh, this is again an important tool uh, what we have for e-thesis. Uh, uh, this has got a, a number of theses similarly 
a national chemical laboratory Pune, uh, thesis full text free, it is available. And NDLTD, it is very popular, uh, everybody knows that uh, network digital library of thesis and dissertations. And uh, open access progress dissertations and thesis, South Ganga, uh, which is very popular in the country and uh, many universities are responding now. Uh, now you, uh, we are able to see uh, number of uh, thesis uploaded on the website. And this uh, has become a tool to the researchers who are currently doing their research to identify the titles which uh, have already been done to identify the duplicates. And also vidyanidhi.org, this is another site uh, which was uh, uh, started by the University of Mysore and uh, that is also in the process. And uh, similarly, major fellowships and uh, scholarships, this would be definitely useful to the faculty as well as the students uh, when they go out for studies. Uh, they need to have the sources. Uh, from where they can get a scholarship because they cannot afford uh, when they go to uh, foreign countries for higher studies. So, it would be very difficult for them uh, if they know the source. So, uh, from that they can at least attempt to get an admission with the scholarship. So, for getting scholarship these are the uh, links that are available uh, sources uh, from which any student can get fellowship provided they should uh, fulfill the uh, eligibility requirement criteria. The common with the scholarships and the fellowship plan, fellowships and scholarships, uh, national scholarship, scholarship positions, uh, United States Indian Educational Foundation. So, all these uh, uh, links will uh, lead you to know about the things that are available. And uh, similarly, uh, uh, as we all have been experiencing, uh, when we uh, find some material freely available and uh, in electronic format, we intend to uh, reproduce uh, many things while maybe writing assignments or writing papers for the conferences or writing books or writing articles to journals. So, we fail in uh, checking uh, that uh, that leads to that uh, copyright violation uh, again it becomes a plagiarism case. So, uh, particularly for uh, since we are talking about the sources uh, that are available on um, internet on the internet for academic purpose. So, it has to be used ethically that is uh, very, very important uh, whether knowingly or unknowingly or intentionally or unintentionally when you reproduce something from other sources that has to be properly cited. Uh, if it is not cited uh, that will lead to that uh, uh, kind of inconveniences and uh, that will be a plagiarism. We will have to face the consequences in future. So, to be safer side what we have to do is that whatever the scholarly content what create has to be tested with some software tools again which are available on the internet freely. Uh, some software tools uh, which are freely available for uh, checking and the similarity uh, index. Similarity index means uh, the amount of information that we have reproduced from other sources and whether it has been properly cited or not that has to be uh, cross checked with some tools for which we have this wiper, uh, dupli checker, plagiarism checker, copy tracker and all. So, with this when you run uh, your document in that, it will clearly tell you the complete statistics from where you have uh, 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 copied and the copied portions have been properly cited or not or if not cited at least whether it is uh, um, there listed in the references or not. If not, then that will be considered as a reproduced content. So, that will uh, increase the percentage of similarity index. Normally, uh, we have this uh, Turnitin now Urkund uh, provided by uh, Inflipnet uh, that uh, uh, shows uh, when it crosses uh, 25 percent automatically in the Turnitin, the color will change. Uh, it will be yellow. When it crosses 29, it is uh, red. So, when it is below 25, it will be showing green. That means, the content what you uh, submit to either uh, a conference or uh, to a journal or to a publisher for publishing your book, you have to be very careful for that. These tools will help. Again, this is absolutely free and available on the internet for us. Then, um, based on these uh, sources uh, in the library, we have to change our role as a librarian. Uh, we cannot be simply the librarian, you know, we have to be the facilitator, uh, facilitator for 
the uh, and we have to play the intermediate role between the sources and uh, the users. So, for that what we have to do because uh, the tools that have been created only to increase or enhance the services quality of services and the amount of sources used by the people and the amount of people who are benefiting from our uh, services that we have to see. And uh, the tools uh, particularly the internet tools uh, whatever we have talked about have uh, increased uh, the convenience for us and also have minimized a number of uh, uh, constraints. Uh, but the, again we have to create an ambience in the library and a welcoming spaces without any uh, hindrances they should be able to come to our library have access to the resources or from the desktop also we can do for that we have to do. And uh, if you want to reach uh, make your uh, resources reach the unreached you have to definitely have a good website. Uh, the maintaining a good website is uh, very very important for a library. And the service with the good smile, since we have got uh, the sophisticated technology, uh, with that we will be able to uh, meet the requirements of the users. Uh, with that because since we do not have to do number of uh, the, um, uh, most of the things uh, manually or conventionally, we can devote time to uh, uh, tailor make our services or customize our services according to the uh, uh, demands of the users appropriately. Otherwise, simply uh, if it is document based, uh, no user will come to the library and uh, nobody will use ours. It should be information based and it should be information centric. So, we have to keep in mind always about the user's need. So, assisting the users to a large extent. So, technology has helped us to simplify the process of organizing things and managing things. So, when the uh, manpower is high, where technology almost uh, does uh, 70 percent of the work in the library, uh, then on the manual work will automatically come down for the from manual works the staff will be liberated. Uh, so, logically we have to think when the workload uh, comes down, uh, it is uh, the, uh, the minimizing the load is to only assist the users. So, that uh, we have to always be in touch with the users who come to the library and with a good smile then only they will keep on coming to the library uh, with interest. So, interaction with the teachers and students. So, to know about their satisfaction level we have to constantly in touch with the teachers and students to know about their feedback about our services. And uh, visualizing the library statistics is very important how many documents have been used and how many users are coming and which subject is uh, prominent uh, in using the sources and uh, uh, who are the potential users who visit the library regularly. And also visualizing the impact of research publications of faculty and students with uh, measuring tools like bibliometrics and altmetrics. So, the when the uh, uh, we talk about the academic uh, uh, scenario, uh, people who, who have been uh, publishing papers uh, 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 scholarly literature. Uh, to what extent it has influenced the society or their own uh, peer group that has to be measured. But they may not have any idea we as a library professionals can easily identify um, uh, the publications which are uh, widely used in the form of citations we may be able to track. So, for that uh, that altmetrics tool it is uh, uh, playing a major role now it is coming up in a very big way to measure the impact of publications which are widely talked about and discussed through social media. So, that also we have to tell our own uh, uh, teachers and students that your publication has gone up to this level many people need that they have been using that. Then they will be motivated automatically to concentrate on their research. And the providing customized innovative information services also is another one because since we have the tools we should be able to customize our service and uh, it has to be innovative and encouraging the users to make the use of other libraries too if they are not uh, self uh, satisfied with our own library we should uh, do some referral service to the uh, users who can go to some other libraries for uh, using their resources. And also we can uh, uh, to motivate uh, the users to either use our resources or come to our library we can 
uh, think of instituting some awards in the library. So, these are all the uh, if we have to survive in the changing scenario particularly with the dominance of technology, we have to change ourselves, our role has to be changed. So, with this uh, we can uh, uh, wind up by summing up that uh, the internet plays a key role in providing sources uh, for um, uh, academic community. So, uh, since we have discussed about the variety of sources in the starting from open course where e-books, e-journals, e-thesis and dissertations and uh, fellowship, uh, scholarship for uh, students and uh, reference tools and uh, plagiarism test uh, tools. So, all those things are uh, directly uh, relevant to the academic uh, disciplines and uh, it, uh, uh, it has influenced a lot. But if uh, we as LAS professionals, if we are able to uh, make it usable optimally by uh, the majority of the stakeholders, it will it can reach the unreached and automatically that uh, promotes or that uh, helps the nation to grow in a different dimensions like um, uh, culture, standard of living, economic economy, all those factors can be automatically taken care of when the knowledge is used optimally. So, since we have the tools, uh, important tools like uh, internet and the world wide web, we should be able to uh, you make use of those tools to simplify the services and uh, customize our services and uh, we have to keep on uh, thinking uh, uh, with the innovative ideas by which we can impress or we can satisfy the users. So, with this uh, we can conclude uh, with a hope that you have uh, at least identified the sources that are uh, freely available on the internet as source of information to all of you uh, to benefit a lot from all those sources. Sources are available in plenty, only thing you have to make up your mind to make use of these resources optimally. And for uh, that the library professions will always be with you for any help or assistance you can approach the libraries of your own institution or anywhere that you find the libraries and the librarians. Thank you.